Hi everybody, this is Toby and welcome to my third video of my Easy Drama 2 tutorial series. So in this video I'm going to explain the interface a little bit. So when you open up Easy Drama 2 for the first time, what you're actually going to see is this. And the first view is the regular default drum kit that's loaded up on startup. And um, usually on this window you can actually change the drum kit, you can load different presets, you can um, swap different instruments. For example, if you do not like the kick drum sound, you can keep the entire drum kit but change only the kick drum. And from here you can actually control everything that's related to your particular drum kit and the different instruments inside your drum kit. Then we can go to the browser tab. The browser tab is actually a nice tool to go through the different MIDI libraries. And you may now ask, what is a MIDI library? So another cool feature of Easy Drummer 2 is that they provide a lot of different pre-recorded drum grooves. So you don't have to invent all the different drum grooves yourself, but they actually provide you a lot of different grooves by, um, you know, played and recorded by real professional drummers you can use for your songs and you can alter these later to better suit your style and your music. And if you want to extend Easy Drummer, you can always purchase new drum crews from the ToonTrack website and they will be shown up here in the browser. And uh, from there you can actually access the new drum grooves and use them for your particular songs. And I will explain how the browser works in detail later. So let's actually just quickly go to the search tab. The search tab is really nice because from there you can actually search all your libraries and you have different options available. Let me just quickly reset this one. And um, up here on the upper part you can actually see we have different um, various libraries we can select. So actually this is a filter so if you just want to have specific grooves from one of the packs you purchased here you can actually filter your results. Then you can also filter it by genre, by type, play style, power hand. Um, the power hand is actually what is um, played regularly to support the beat. So when you want to have a beat that is for example very nice in the verse section, mostly you're playing not so much of the cymbals but you play um, the hi-hat for example, then you can select hi-hat close to hi-hat open and then it will filter out the um, it will actually just show the uh, grooves where the power hand is regularly playing the hi-hat closed or the hi-hat open or maybe if you want uh, the right or crash. Okay, so this is a very very powerful tool over here and um, it's really cool because as you can see there are a ton of different rock grooves. Okay, if we go through this list. and. Um, you can filter them immediately, which is really nice. And I will explain how the search works later. The last tab is our mixer tab. And here you have a mixing console where you can actually mix the different instruments of your drum kit. Like I said in a previous video, the drums have been mixed already. But if you want to make small adjustments, for example, if the snare drum is a little bit too quiet or too loud, you can actually control the volume with these faders and you also have the possibility to pan your drums which is um, yeah, actually common practice because um, you always want to have a pretty wide stereo image when you play the drums. So usually you have the kick drum in the center and then your toms are spread from the left to the right and there are different techniques actually but I will go into detail about this later as well. So underneath the mixing console you have some preset related effects. You can actually fine tune for the sound, for example, the amount of reverb, how much compression you want to apply. And then you can alter the pitch of the heads and the cymbals slightly. And there is also mic, mic bleed. So um, mic bleeding or microphone bleeding, this is um, a particular effect, for example, when you record your overheads. You usually have two microphones, um, you know, just behind your drum kit where you can record all your cymbals and the ride and these things. And of course, when you hit the kick drum, the sound from your kick drum is also audible in this um, in these microphones from the overheads. And bleeding describes the phenomenon of, you know, your kick drum or different instruments of your drum kit being audible in a microphone that was designed to just pick up 
um, yeah, well, different parts of your instrument. For example, when you have the snare drum and you record a snare drum, you usually have one or two microphones on the top or on the bottom. And when you hit the kick drum, you will be able to hear the kick drum sound on the microphone track from your snares. And this is bleeding. And for example, here you can always enable and disable bleed, or you can change how much bleed you want to have from different instruments one time on your overhead microphone and one time on your ambience microphone. Okay, um, but this is also some more advanced stuff. So let's actually just take a look how we can quickly um, yeah, create our first drum track. And therefore we are going to need the window here at the bottom. So this is our little sequencer. There are even more buttons, but we are going to take a closer look into this in the next video. As always, if you have any questions or any ideas, just let me know in the comment section below. And otherwise, we're going to see us in the next video.